Football couldn't be that cruel that it could go all to the last match of the season. We drew one off. We should have won the game, having got ourselves into a winning position, but we failed to do so and we were relegated. Uh, I've never seen so many grown men crying. The emotion of the occasion was, was astounding. Uh, if people think that small clubs like this are unimportant, you should have seen the, the crowd on that day. It's certainly the most traumatic day I've ever had in football. I felt a sense of responsibility for it all. I duly resigned, but the board refused to accept the, the resignation. But that didn't particularly bother me. I think it was the reaction of supporters. They wanted me to stay, try and lead the club back into the league, and uh, that's what I decided to do. I mean, there is disillusionment about it. Uh, the fact that we dropped out of the Football League for many supporters, that was uh, you know, one of the most tragic moments in the way of their lives, never mind their sporting lives. A couple of seasons ago, uh, when we were still in the third division, uh, it went to the last day of the season and uh, we were drawn to play uh, Brighton and Hove Albion and uh, we drew the, that game at Edgar Street and we needed a win to stay in the third division and they stayed up and we went down to the Boxer Conference. As soon as the final whistle went, um, just everybody, there was about a minute of just complete silence and everybody was like just distraught really and then everybody realised what had happened and we all just ran on the pitch. It's been a very difficult time. Uh, we have been very close to going out of business on several occasions. We are in a, and we were when I took over, in a company voluntary arrangement. I think going out of the FA Cup last year, the first round was really, um, it did hit me because I'm now in the, looking at the finances all the while, so you immediately realise that is a big avenue of finance cut off going out on the first round. So I think that was quite a blow to me last year when we went out. It's all about money. Even in the conference, there's a lot of money now conference clubs have got. So you do need backing and finance all the while so we had to sell our best players. But if the tax man's at the door waiting, wants 30,000 and you, there's no way he'll go away. So you've got to, you've got to sell your assets and uh, the players were our assets, so players had to go. So the, There was a time when we thought the club would fold and we wouldn't survive. I think probably now the feeling is that we've turned that corner um, and that we will survive. If you take a club like Manchester United, they would probably take more in their club shop for one home game than we take through the turnstiles in a complete season. Football now at, at this level, and at all levels, cannot pay its way from just football revenue. You know, people who come through the turnstile, it doesn't pay, so basically you need things within the confines of the ground that you can make money at. Conference facilities, hospitality suites, all those sort of things. So I think the, the, the big thing that we need is either redevelopment of Edgar Street or relocation to a, to a nice new ground. The financial side of that is going to, uh, it's going to be difficult, we know that. For too long people have been uh, looking at why um, Hereford United couldn't continue or wouldn't, wouldn't flourish and I decided to look at a way to try find a way in which it could continue and be successful but we had to I, I feel engineer a way in which we could find a way forward for Hereford United but also the rest of that area which is an important part of Hereford City is a slightly run down area in, in some respects but there were enormous opportunities to look at looking at that area as a whole and the whole area and, and um, Edgar Street ground is only one part of it. But by looking at the whole of the area, we could probably find it easier to do something that would help Hereford United in the long term. No club of this size has got quite a bit of potential. There's not another league ground for 50 mile. If we were going well in the conference, you know, I think Gates would be up over 3,000, 3,500. That would more than pay its way at, at, at the moment. But long term, we need the facilities to attract custom during the week. We can't just operate football ground once a fortnight. We do need the aid of the council in terms of helping us either with planning permission or helping us uh, to achieve the aims at Edgar Street. We don't expect the massive input of income, you know, as a ratepayer as well. I think most people would 
would agree that a football club, a professional football club, is not the right place for the council funds. Be fair to the council, they have, they have always offered Edgar Street at a peppercorn rent. Others would say they can do more. Well, perhaps they can, but you have to look at it in, in, in the light of um, what a council can do legally for what is, in effect, a, a private company. We look at the whole of the area and we put forward a scheme to the developer which will do a lot of things, uh, and not only the Hereford United, but um, the, the, the area for, for leisure and recreation, which many people want within the country. We've got a lot of young people, uh, and they want these facilities, that, um, you know, the multiplex and other, mm. uh, other facilities, and are quite excited about the idea. Uh, they need to get the ground situation resolved, get uh, rid of all their debts, and then be able to start afresh um, on a sound financial basis. Whether we have the current uh, team and set up and management that, that can achieve that in the, the current circumstances, I am a little bit sceptical. I think people have got to unite behind a, a scheme and say this is what we want and get behind the, uh, everyone that's actually pushing for that particular scheme. If we get division amongst um, supporters and, uh, and uh, club members and uh, councillors, then I think the whole thing will fall. Well, it all sounds very exciting. I think, it, you know, if it comes off everything, you know, we're going to have a nice stadium and everything done round us, but um, and the, all around will be nice, what the what the town needs, but at this moment of time, there's still lots of ifs and buts about it, but I think, yes, it would be nice to have, be nice to stay at Edgar Street and have a nice new stadium, or stadium all redone. There is a, a, an answer, and I think we, we, we've actually got to work on it and stop actually sniping. I think, I think um, the local newspaper, I think, actually said it's been bedeviled by cynicism over a very long time, and I, I think a lot of people are guilty of, of um, doing harm um, from, from directors to to supporters who had a, a cynical attitude toward, towards Hereford United towards the way in which it, it's been managed and I don't think that's helped the club in a, in a way. I think what we need is a positive attitude by everyone um, and I think we can actually achieve what we're looking at. We've not had the best of seasons, I think sometimes when you reach your pinnacle like we did against Leicester it has an adverse effect afterwards, you know the players have reached such a great height that it drains them emotionally, physically and all the rest of it and we've not had as far as the league is concerned the best of seasons uh, but I do feel that we've got a very good spirit in the club, a spirit where there is driving ambition both from the players and from the team as a whole to be successful and if we can keep that going then we can turn the whole thing around and get back in the league. And I can tell you if this scheme falls, Hereford United will eventually close and in a not a very long time. It is, you know, an, an important part of the community, I think, and it would be a crying shame if ever a club of this nature went to the wall and, and a city of this size uh, and of this nature, tourist uh, area, failed to have a football club of any note. I think the recent cup run and the attraction of television cameras proved just how worth a football club is to the community. And for a tourist area, a tourist track town, the public relations department just could not afford to buy that publicity. That's what the football club gives it. That's what the football club does for the city. Now I want the city to do something in return to the football club. Hey,